Greetings, my friends. Well, the day is finally here and I get to have this class with you. And you know, I've imagined you all sitting there so many times and it's really kept me going and kept me keeping the quality up because I want you to really enjoy this. So thanks again for signing up for the Polymer Clay Adventure. You know, I'd like to do this every year because it's been the most fun thing ever. And I hope you agree. Uh, send me any messages you have, any questions, and I'd love to see pictures of what you make. So let's begin. So caning. We start with that today because I want you to have enough cane to make whatever you want during the course of this class. And we'll be exploring different techniques with it, and you'll get to see the, all kinds of things that you can do with it. But to me, the most important thing to start with is enough cane that you don't have the sense that you're going to run out, the sense that you're going to have to stop and make more. So we're going to begin today's class with just a whole bunch of cane. So here are a couple blends. Uh, this is a two-part blend of fuchsia and cadmium yellow. And this is a two-part blend of uh, cadmium yellow and green. I'm starting with a couple of simple blends, and I hope you don't mind me uh, beginning the class with the blends already made. Because, you know, I've watched about a thousand videos on blend making. I know they're out there for you. They're pretty good. And uh, you can make reference to films I've previously done on blending, too. So we'll start with it already blended so that we can kind of jump in. So my first suggestion when it comes to cane making is never stick yourself in a trap of having all your blend made into one thing. So the first thing I always do is cut it at least in half. And I start with one piece and I set one piece aside. So uh, you could probably call me a clay hoarder, but you know it always pays off for me to have some choices later on what I want to do. So I'm going to make this one into a fan fold. And I'm going to do that so that I can uh, take advantage of my pretty blend. And I'm going to form it into a rectangle, kind of squarish. I'll start here. I'm going to flip it back and forth. And I'm going to make a graduated color little stack for myself. See that end house? Not exactly. We're not going to worry about that now or uh, really ever. So I've got a stack like this, and I can use it for a lot of different things. If I want to leave it in this shape only, I can go ahead and form it now into a half circle, triangle, uh, or I can stack it up. For this uh, little project, I'm going to stack it up. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to decide how I want it to look. Do I want my dark middle? Do I want my light middle? Okay. I don't know. I think I'm going toward that light middle. And I think I'm going to bring in the sides of this and start getting it into a little different shape. So I'll explain now why I like to do it like this. Um, if I made this and just made a rectangle and maybe straightened out the sides, I'd have stripes. And they're pretty, that's fine. But what I like to do is create interest in my canes by changing the existing shape. And you know, that seems so elementary, though of course you're going to change the shape. But you know, a lot of people, you make a nice cane and, you know, it's looking pretty good and you kind of feel afraid to warp it. Well, don't be, because the warping part, I call it pandorification, kind of in jest, but the warping part is where you get all your character and interest in your canes. So for now, we're going to leave this like this so we can look at the other one and, and what the difference of the other one is. I'm going to take the other half of this pretty blend. And since the light part is in the middle of this one, I'll leave the light part in the outside of this one. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it up and make a good old-fashioned jelly roll. So you see the difference between one that's stacked uh, and one that's rolled. So we're going to take this one back again and we're going to reduce it. So there's a reduction process and we'll cut to it already reduced so that you don't have to uh, keel over dead from boredom. But reducing, of course, is nothing more than pulling and stretching until you've got the size that you want. This one, though, we're not going to reduce right away. And I'm going to show you something else that we're going to do with this one, just because you've seen a million uh, jelly rolls, and maybe we'll go a different way with this. So with this one, we're going to add a um, uh, contrasting edging. You know, black is always good for that. 
but sometimes if I'm using uh, colors like these I want to add something a little bit unexpected so I always keep a lot of uh, thin sheets of dark colors around and thin sheets of light colors around and the reason I do that is so that I can um, make wraps and divide things without having to always have it be literally black or white you know just the one expected thing or the other expected thing so with regard to lightness and darkness um, have fun with it um, I made this green by just taking some regular green scrap that I had on hand and um, put just a pinch of black in it and blended it up to make uh, a green that I could use for line and for dimension and that's what we've got here so when you have a, a cane that's wrapped like this you kind of fall into a trap sometimes it's okay here's a circle and it's a bullseye and I'm done but you know you can have a lot more fun with it than that what I like to do is to start to change them around so in this case I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to cut it in half again so I've got these cuts made and I'm going to stick them back to back just for the holy heck of it so instead of the same cane that you see a million times it's just something that's um, a bullseye or a spiral wrapped into a bullseye you already have something different here to play with and uh, just keep in mind with these wraps you don't want to go really any thicker than about a number five because you don't want the wrap to start taking over your design right away and you know that can happen it's happened to me so I've stretched this out so we can make kind of a more pointy flower and I'm going to put some green on just one side of it so I've got my six pieces and I'm going to do this you know whenever I make one of these people always really like it and it's really surprisingly easy to do now it would seem like you would lay this on a sheet of green and have this line be down the middle but not only is that too predictable but I've tried it before and with these green lines here it's really too much of that so I'm going to lay it out on some pale yellow and this is what I was talking about earlier sometimes you're not wanting to make a statement with your lines and your wraps you're just wanting to divide clay so I keep some really, you know, kind of boring stuff around, like this yellow, this pale yellow, and this dark green, so that I can make light and dark dividing lines that, you know, don't really have all that much design uh, characteristic in the final product. Now you'll notice in my caning, I don't get too crazy about everything um, being the same direction and being lined up and there's a place for that there's certain kinds of geometric caning where you know you really have to do that but to me uh, the organic nature of having these things kind of waver and flow together and create curves that really appeals to me a lot so that's why you'll see that sometimes I just let it go where it's going to go Okay, anytime you want to maintain a certain shape that you really like, you know how that goes. You know, you put it together and you really like it. And then by the time you reduce it, everything ends up kind of the same shape as the last one that was round, that was triangular. And you, sometimes you lose a lot of your little nuance that you like the most. And the way to retain those shapes is to put fill in there. So let's talk about fill. <clears throat> Translucent's great, you know, translucent's a good escape valve because you feel like, well, I'll put the translucent in there and then when I put it together with other things, you know, it'll always match. Well, you know, that's kind of true in a way and I love translucent. I mean, I love it too much. But the thing is, <clears throat> with a translucent wrap, you're always going to be able to see through it. And that can be good or bad. If I have this wrapped in translucent and I lay it against some more dark, some black, that translucent is going to show the dark color, the light color, through there. <clears throat> so we have our little shape here. And most of us want to preserve the shape that we really like, the one that we've chosen and worked so hard on. But what really happens a lot of the time is you pack this, you start to manipulate it, and you start to uh, reduce it. 
and the shape kind of disappears on you. So there's a couple ways to get around that. Um, I like to use translucent fill whenever I can because translucent has a mystery to it that uh, just can, continues to captivate me and most people that see it really like it too. So when you're thinking about fill, you know, this cane's kind of about the pink and orange mostly. And no matter what we do to it, I'd like to preserve that theme, the brightness and the, you know, the natural looking colors that it has, kind of tropical. Uh, but in order to do that, I'm going to need to uh, not bring in a lot of other colors. So I've got a little bit of green here because I don't want to overdo the dark green. So I've got the lighter green and I've got translucent. So you can imagine that if I were to fill this with this yellow, okay, to preserve that curve, I'd have a whole bunch of yellow all of a sudden. It's real eye-catching even though it's it's been intentionally been kind of dulled out. So what the uh, translucent does for you it allows you to keep the shape of things that you like the shape of without uh, bringing another color into it that, that you really didn't intend to use. So toward that end I'm going to place this roll of this translucent and it's got this casual little green wrap. And the green wrap is going to really help us out because what it's going to do is it's going to divide the translucent from the color and it's going to add a little pop at the same time. I can wrap this whole thing up now or I can wrap it partially. I think I'm pretty much finished with this element so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it. But as I keep saying and I do emphasize don't be in too much of a hurry to wrap things if you're not sure. You can always do it later. You could always cut it right under there and leave that fill. You could always just do halfway and it gives you options to add elements that you're interested in later on. So I'm going to bevel off this edge and make it easier to place it together with this other green. And I like the way that looks and it keeps a nice crisp line for me on my edge. So we'll go on with more ways to use our blends. So sometimes you have a piece like this and you feel like you almost have to fan fold it or jelly roll it in order to use it and have it be compressed enough to be usable. But that's not so. Uh, what you can do is cut it and stack it. Pinching this into a triangle instead of stacking it into a triangle initially because that way I can uh, morph the size of the lines and make them look, you know, graduated and I like that look. So we'll take this one and I think it would be kind of a natural thing to make our lines out of a dark green uh, but you know I don't like it, it's too natural for me. So what I want to do is stick in something a little bit odd. So over here I've got some colors that I've been playing around with. And these are colors that are mixed uh, up from leftovers from these. So when you do that, you're always going to get a lot of color coordination because, you know, all the colors that you're already using are going to be in your scrap. So I keep little logs of blended scrap around when I make these blends initially, and that way I've got them around for things like this. Now I normally don't go below about a six for almost any kind of wrap. Because you know and I know what a pain it is to work with really super thin pieces and you know they get bubbles and all that stuff. But um, that's okay with me right now because we're going to do something with this and I don't want the orange line in the middle to take it over too much. So we're going to have this. Very thin, it's a number eight. Now, in the Pandorification process, see how it's a little wrinkly? I don't care about that. So in the Pandorification process, I like to stick things in other things. I like to um, make places to put things, just because we can, right? And I don't want these all lined up like little soldiers, because then they don't look wild. So I'm going to make that line, and I'm going to make another line with my ruler that's kind of at a different angle and a different depth. Okay, And I'm going to make maybe a little one up there, a really small one up there. And into those lines I'm going to insert some snakes. So I'm going to put one more in uh, some kind of weird color. Let's use this scrap. 
So we're going to stick with the, our, our largest log in here. And see how we don't care if it's all one color? It doesn't matter. So now we've got this thing. And we're going to put our little, little bizarre object on here. So I'm going to cut it in half. And always remember to use your blade for picking things up with these really thin wraps. Oh my gosh, you know how they want to tear off. And I'm going to put it together. So, you know, now you have a leaf. You know, I, I, I realize these aren't found in nature. But, you know, I'm not that big, I'm not that big on nature. That's a cool shape. If you want to save this curved bottom, you're going to want to put some fill in there. And that brings us back around to our translucent. And you see how handy that can be. So we're going to put some um, fill in here. And this time I will wrap the translucent in dark because I would like to kind of indicate a stem kind of shape. So I'm going to take some translucent fill, place it down in there. I've left this open on the end so we can you know, take it to different spots as we go. We want to take it without it being too closed off. But you know, if it were wrapped all the way around, you guys, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt anything. And in this one, I'm going to put translucent in between. So that when we go to bend it, it'll already be kind of divided into petals. And I think you'll really like that. So let me show you what I mean. Well, I uh, went ahead and wrapped two sides of this cane in translucent. And uh, we're going to go on from there. I'm going to cut it in half like we always do before I make any real changes in it. So, I like this. I like the way it looks. But I kind of have some ideas about it. And we're going to do some stuff. So I've made a cut. And I've not been real worried about exactly how the cut was made because these are flowers for skeining. And as we go along, you'll see that there's a, a, a freedom in skeining that I think you're going to really like. So I've made this a different way. We'll put it back together a different way. And I'm going to cut it in half and reassemble it. So now we've broken up the original motif that we were working with. And we're going to make it just a little bit more complex, but not in too much of a lined up way, in more of a free way. So I've got about four inches here. It's four now, isn't it? And I'm going to cut it in half, and we'll put it back together. I've got to tell you, there's a little bit of background noise outside today. There's some workmen out there. I went out there to shoot them stink eye, but you know what? They were really cute. So, um, <laughs> so instead of giving them a hard look, you know, I, uh, I just waved at them. I said, hey, good morning. You know how that is. We are not uh, immune to the charms of the young men. I hope to never be. So here we are. They're outside making noise. We're inside doing our thing. It's real life. I don't know. I kind of like it like that. So now I've got this thing. I really like it. I like it a lot better. And uh, I think I'll really flatten it so that I can make it into kind of a square. Now, never think that when we're going to do florals that they have to be round or flower-shaped, you know, triangle like a, you know, like a, what, a lily? Um, obviously, I don't know anything about flowers. But anyway, uh, they don't have to be because I have this secret weapon I'm going to show you. And we can make them look organic even when we're taking them from a square shape out. I'm going to take this one to three. I don't really need it to get super tiny. And of course we're keeping in mind scale and we're always hanging on to larger pieces and smaller pieces to give ourselves variety in the scale and everything's not all just the same. So now this is going to be uh, our square one. And this one turns out kind of like this when it's used. Now I was just saying, you know, I was going to tell you about my secret weapon. When we're going to make our our skeined flowers. We're going to work with them. Number one, this um, translucent material really gives us a lot of leeway on how we want to stretch things out. And that's why I like to put a lot of translucent on my skein projects. See how there's that hole there? Oh, we don't even care about that because it's going to go down. And this is how it goes down. 
I get a ball stylus. This little medium one's really handy. You know, I'm surrounded by all these Sculpey products, and you think, oh my god, this is a Sculpey commercial. But honestly, I use them all the time, and, and uh, before I had this, you cannot believe the janky rigged stuff I had, you know, trying to make just this shape. Um, I even glued some toothpicks to some beads. <laughs> like it was really crappy and, and it didn't work. So um, if you get your hands on some ball styluses, these come in three sizes and they've saved me a hundred times. So that's just an FYI. You know, it's nice to have access to inexpensive tools. So see how we were talking about the, the, the end, the base, and how it's going to be really um, adding to your design? So when you twist these, and push them down with your stylus and twist them, not only are we not concerned with exactly how these meet in the middle, and we're not concerned with whether or not there's kind of a hole there, but we're actually using that area to um, enhance our design. And as you twist this and your colors blend and stuff, it makes some really pretty stuff. And later on when we go to apply it, we can let some of them show. We can do stuff. Now back to the secret weapon business. So maybe you're saying, well, geez, Pandora, that's still kind of square for a flower, and I don't like it. Well, be sure that you always have a pair of scissors handy. And now when I've got my scissors, I can make different shapes in this the way I want to. So I don't have to live with every bit of uh, translucent fill that I've ever put in there. But I have it to work with during the stretching process, and it just gives me so much freedom without smearing my design. So now I can take these, I can make them really wavy, you know what I mean? I can take them and um, I can pull them out into points. And I've got all kinds of flexibility with having the translucent there, and even with a square shape triangular shape, round shape. You've got all kinds of opportunity to morph your flower and to make it more organic and soft looking. We're going to be doing a lot of that. It's really fun. Um, that would seem like plenty of uh, components for most anyone, but it's not plenty of components for me because I really like the feeling of having a huge amount of uh, material to work with. So I'm going to take this one Cut it in half like we always do with all material and all canes. Cut it in half. So now I've got that set aside. I don't have to stop and make blends. I've got a lot of freedom. So what I did uh, while y'all weren't looking is I made some little inserts. Ordinary little bullseyes in a rather haphazard manner. And haphazard is kind of the name of the game with this skeining because you really don't want it to look uh, extremely ordered in every single cane. So I'm going to take this and make really kind of a traditional brain cane kind of configuration. I don't know if you've seen the brain cane, but they're kind of just uh, folded up back and forth, kind of, you know, this way. But what I like to do with these is put something inside to, uh, to break it up. And I've got some cool things to put inside. So I've got this uh, translucent, once again, and it's wrapped in a thin sheet of yellow and it's wrapped again in a about a medium sheet of pink. This is that fuchsia, Primo Sculpey fuchsia. Oh, I just can't get enough of this stuff. You know, I was looking at uh, this design when I originally sketched it out. I like to use colored pencils and I like to see how it's going to look. <clears throat> and honestly, the only thing I didn't like about all these was they just weren't pink enough for old Pandora. So, I love my fuchsia. It's beautiful with the yellows and oranges, beautiful with the greens. If you're big on uh, plums and orchids, they look good with this mix. You guys have your own color palettes. I've seen them and they're beautiful. So, what I've got here is a little piece. It only needs to be this, uh, this wide. And uh, I'm just going to cut it a little short because when I mash it, that's going to lengthen it. <clears throat> And I want it to be kind of like this. So you don't want to get too much of a polka dot look sometimes, or maybe you do. But that's just not what I had in mind for this one. And that way, as I fold this together and make my kind of just ordinary brain cane, 
I'm going to be adding interest to it in lots of different ways. So I'm going to fan fold a little bit. I'm going to go over too far on purpose. I'm going to bring this color back on purpose. And what we're doing is just trying to break up the same um, kind of predictable blend. You know, just through inserting things that uh, please us. So that's about enough in that area. And a little bit farther down, I'm going to add some of my green. And this is just um, our old cane, the one that we used here. It was translucent, wrapped in that dark green. And now I've wrapped it one more time in a bright green, just to kind of wake up this area of the cane. There we go. And I'm going to mash it down on just one side. So now we've got a little variety. We've got one that's mashed down on both sides to make a flattened uh, pod. And we've got one that's more of a teardrop configuration. And I'm going to start the teardrop over here at the edge. And I'm going to bring it in. Give it a little bit of a loop. you got things laying all around that you can throw in there. And uh, that's the part where you're going to really want to pick and choose. What do I want to see? You know, what is this going to mean? Is this going to be too much red if I don't break it up? Well, you know, yeah. So you've got all kinds of things that you can put in here. And you can even use blends in this area. And I happen to have one right here. So when you see that your colors are bunching up a little bit, um, that's a really good spot to put a a blended piece of cane in there. It'll just be really pretty. Uh, we don't have too much yellow in this yet, but keep your eyes on the too much yellow issue because it's just an issue. It just always is. Okay, that's plenty of that. I don't want to overdo it. So we'll wrap this up. We've got ourselves uh, another blended spiral jelly roll. And you want to keep this kind of stuff laying around. You know, some days when you're, just, you're feeling like you want to make stuff, but you're not positive what you're going to make, or you don't feel like getting into the, the real labor-intensive part of stuff, um, make yourself some uh, nice blends and set them aside. And these were made especially for this project, but golly, you'd be surprised what you think up when you just have them there and you know you don't have to make them all. You know, it's just nice. So I really like this. I think it's, I want it pretty small, this section of cane. I'm just going to lay this in here. So to break up our cane, just one last time, I'm going to add a, a short line of this green. That way I know I'm going to keep uh, the definition between my red and orange and just make it a little more, a little more crisp because you may want to reduce this a lot, you know. And we don't want to lose the, the um, separation between one thing and another. But now we've got some green, like this one. we got our pink and orange, like this one. Okay. We've got our dark green and the translucent. And the translucents are like we talked about before. They're creating spaces that aren't one thing or the other. This is going to come up really dark looking. This one will come up kind of uh, lighter, more neutral. And that's going to lend a lot of interest to uh, to our final cane. So our hunky workmen have gone on home, and it's nice and quiet. And during the downtime, I reduced this cane uh, after it was forced into a triangle, and I cut it in half. With the other half, I flattened one of the corners so that it would stand up like this, and I placed a sheet of translucent over it. My translucent sheet that I'm using right now, I also made off camera, and it's just a, a number two setting strip of translucent, with very thin number six sheet of the pale yellow over it. And I've got here some to spare because we're going to do other things with it. On top of that, I'm going to put some of my leftover cane, and we're going to stick that right in the middle. Now neither of these is symmetrical. They don't have to be because when they're cut and put back together, these designs will form symmetry on their own. So I'm going to set this down here, and on either side, I'm going to place one of these. And I don't mind at all if this pink goes next to this 
translucent. I think it's going to look really good and it'll avoid the appearance of too much translucence. So now we have this to play with. And we're going to add one more thing on the side. And what I've decided to put on the side is a little bit of this green. So you figure these are all halves of pieces that we held back when we were building the original cane. So you don't have to start, you know, making new stuff all the time. So it's cool because now we have a cane that's going to be incorporating um, all of our designs that we've made so far. And it's turning into something, you know, just really unusual and bohemian looking and all that stuff. So I've got this piece of um, blend that's back from when we started this one. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it into a really long, skinny kind of triangle. That's okay for now. So the other stuff is that sheet of translucent I told you about that I put a thin sheet of yellow over. And what I want to make with this is a nice stack and bring my um, and bring my fuchsia back in. And I'm going to take a sheet of green and put it on the other side. So now we've got this interesting stack. It goes from yellow to green. It gives us plenty of pink. And I'm going to start forcing this inward. So you know how we talked about our lines. Well, I like to bend them, and I like the way they look after they're changed. So you want to take your time with this part of the reduction. You don't want to lose a lot of this cane. It makes a really pretty scrap, so I don't feel too bad. But if you take your time and don't try to, uh, you know, squeeze it too hard in any one spot, it'll get where you want it to be. And so we've got our stripes. I brought them in and reduced them. I about doubled their size, cut them in half, put them back together. And then you've got your nice little dealies that we made a minute ago. And we're going to poke them in here. Now, don't forget when you're going to do a fill like this, to get them really pointed because the last thing you need after all your hard work is to have a hole there. I don't think I could bear it after all this. So um, I'm going to stick that in and I'm going to make sure it's really poked down in there. We'll bring this out and we'll get at least one slice of it. I think we deserve a payoff after all this, right? So I'll just take a little piece off the edge. You guys save pieces of your canes. It's really neat to do. You know, I try to remember to um, to bake up one piece of just about everything I make. And that way I can kind of remember how I did it. But then I can just remember the joy and happiness of making it. And um, that's enough for me. So there you have it. Our main cane is made. We have all these small canes to work with. And I just don't see how our design is not going to be just awesome. So, you know, while you're resting and unwinding after all this, you know, it's probably Miller time, you know. This is a lot of work, but you know, it's the best kind of work because any time that you can do something that causes you to kind of forget everything and relax and think your own thoughts and create and look at beautiful things, you know, I, I cling to that. I think it's one of the most important things in life. That's why I make art and that's why I teach art. So in part two, we're going to make our, our project itself. In the meanwhile, you can reduce uh, half of all of these if you want to. You can leave them the size that they are. But be thinking in your mind of how you want your frame to turn out and how you want to use it. So skeining day has finally arrived. And I'm so happy to do this with you. I think you're really going to like it. Now this is not a long segment, and I'll tell you why. Uh, skeining is the most hands-on of hands-on. And I know each of our projects is going to look completely different, even if you wanted it to look like mine, and I doubt that you would, because you've got your own style, and that's what's so cool about this. So I'm just prefacing it with, um, I don't want you to feel gypped out, but I'm not going to uh, film every second of me making this project, because I cannot imagine anything more boring. Uh, I think they use it for um, punishment in penal institutions, you know. So, uh... We're going to talk about how it's really done, and it's so elementary, and you're going to be great at it. So the only thing to really avoid doing with skeining is putting your cane together, any of them really, into a kaleidoscope before you start. I made this for you because, you know, we want at least one, don't we? But if your cane uh, is like this, 
you have every option to change the design and to make new kind of things with it that you that you would ever want to have. But once it's in a kaleidoscope, it's around cane and you know, it's going to stay around cane. So it's kind of different. Most of us uh, who are doing kaleidoscope caning are really, is the, the big end uh, result and the goal is to put it into one. But you don't want to do that with skeining. You want to just join individual slices. They'll stick together fine. That's what I did. Um, another thing with skeining, and that's why I made this great big one for you. This has got a piece of scrap underneath because I want it to kind of stick up. You'll see how we do that. And sometimes when you add motifs like we did in that cane, the reason that they're a little bit larger in some sections is because we're going to pinch them from the back. That's going to reduce them by quite a bit in the final product. So obviously you're not making one this big, but it's a lot easier for you to see on this big one than those itty bitty guys. So when you pinch your motifs and then you let them go, you're getting uh, just parts of those sections. So when you're building your cane in the colors that you like, in the style that you like, just keep in mind uh, where you want to place some larger elements, like we've done here. Also, always keep in mind that the scissors are your best buddy. Because honestly, you know, I like these stripes and everything, but, you know, partway through building it, I was like, dude, you know, it reminds me of like um, a beach umbrella or like a popcorn box or something, you know, it's like okay with the stripes. So, you know, just cut them off, you know. You can take your scissors on any element at any time, and you can make all kinds of adjustments. And the scrap looks really cool for like your flower stamens. And you can put your scrap through the um, pasta machine. You can imagine how interesting that would be. So cut them down as much as your little heart desires. Uh, save the pieces to have fun with, okay? And then adjust them to be more of what you're wanting. Or in this case, you know, less, okay? So you want to be free with your design. You want to enjoy it. And part of the fun of uh, staining is coming up with new shapes. So this is why we didn't put all of our cane together. I'd like to make a flower that is going to be curled up. And I want it to have um, a little stem on it. And the way this is done, you see it's really keeping a lot of integrity in the cane. The way this is done is just by getting it warm. It gets warm in your hand, so you're taking your time. I like to really thin them out on the edges so they can be wavy. Okay. So you're just thinning out pieces, creating little bumps and curves, and making your uh, plant life look a little bit more alive. I like to take this very edge, hang on to it there, and twist it, and make kind of a pretty ed edge for it, just in case we end up using that in the design if it's not covered over with the leaf or something. So you're already making things that are more three-dimensional. Uh, this was such a fun cane. I've had so much fun with it. I reduced it, made some small pieces. They were a lot smaller than this, actually, and that brings us to the stretching. Uh, sometimes you've got a really small piece. I, I made this when the workmen were here. I was kind of bored and uh, just took some scrap and, and made it. And I'm using it for a design element, and I'm knowing that it's a very small scale with regard to its design. But uh, be sure that before you, you know, condemn a really small scrap to the uh, scrap pile forever, that these are going to be stretched. And it's really neat because sometimes you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've over-reduced that so much, you know, I had all that detail, you know, makes you want to cry. But honestly, um, with skeining, you can stretch it out as much as you want. So really, now this one's got a little bit more to say than, you know, than I would have given it credit for. And we use the same technique with a round one as we do with those triangular ones. We're really just creating a channel where we can raise it up off the surface. Okay? Now speaking of the raising part, I guess you know that when you heat these things up, you know, parts of them, especially if they're real thin and delicate, are going to want to fall back down. So what you do with that is you pad it from the bottom. You're taking little bits of scrap, 
and you're giving them a chance to stay up where they need to stay. And it's really fun and easy to do and you can put it wherever you want to. Of course you can remove it if you want to. And you can make it so that the waves in your in your pieces you know stay wavy after they're cooked up. So that's really fun to do. For a larger piece, a larger flower or a centerpiece, um, you can make a kind of a circle and that'll hold it up, half circle, and that'll hold it up uh, if you're going to leave the outside showing, something like this, okay? So as you go along and you're using your, your uh, scrap to pad it up from the bottom, just make sure that your scraps is not too hideously ugly because honestly, you know, sometimes I've used, you know, some random um, scary scrap and I've seen that, you know, if you turn the frame different ways, you can kind of see it here and there. Uh, it's not too good looking. So either use coordinated scrap like from this stuff or some translucent or just a solid uh, color of white beige for your, for your scrap, okay? And that way, uh, you know, if it peeks through, it won't be disastrous looking. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is your style. And let me tell you something just here and now. I don't want you to feel like I've completely uh, abandoned you right when the project started. But there is no one in my world that's going to want to make this exact frame. I know this, and, and that's a good thing. Because you've got a style that you like to work in. You've got a palette that you like to work in. Maybe you want something totally different, like this one, with just a couple colors, okay? Maybe you want to do something where you've put your um, motifs down flat and then just made a little um, of the texture by placing things on top of them. There's just so many ways to go with this. So I never want you to feel like uh, you're stuck with using up all your cane uh, or any one style that you've ever seen or liked because your hands and your mind and, and your talent are going to determine what your piece looks like. So that's why we're not going to belabor this today. I've just given you some tips. Um, one of my most important tips is you are not stuck with anything. If I said to myself, oh my god, I hate this flower, it's got to go. You can take it off, okay? So while you're laying out your design, it's so fun, it's so relaxing to just lay it out a hundred times if you want to because you're not stuck with it until you've, you've cured it. Now the way I do this is I get my uh, bacon bond and I keep it in a dish upside down, you know, and that way I don't have to, you know, smack it on the back like ketchup every time I want a drop to come out because that's annoying. And what I do is keep it in there for when I want to squeeze it and over to the side somewhere I keep a little uh, dish or some kind of lid and uh, I take a hunk of uh, scrap and I make a, a little base for it. That was kind of a big one there. There you go. I make a little base for it. And then I stick it to where I am and that way I can squirt a little bit of my um, bacon bond in there and uh, work out of this dish. So once you're ready to settle it down and you've, you know, you've squeezed ample amounts of bacon bond under the larger elements, well, sometimes you want a little insurance. You know, you really like that leaf. You want it to stay there. Okay, little dabs with your brush, and it's a really fun process. And it turns out really nicely. And then your, you know, dish isn't moving all over the place when you're trying to work. Okay. So those are some tips. You know, I really hope that um, you've enjoyed this. I think the best way to start this out is with cane that you already have. You're going to get a feel for your design and get into your groove. Uh, the cane building I showed obviously can be done with any colors, any quantities with your own palette. So I'm so looking forward to what you make. I'm dying to see it. Uh, please send me pictures at busypandora at gmail.com. And also, um, I'm offering uh, support on Facebook through Instant Message or whatever they call it now. And I'll be on a few days a week, a few hours a day uh, while I'm working on other stuff. Uh, and let me answer your questions or offer you any help that you might need. Uh, 
I think that you've got everything you need to make a beautiful project and you've got it all in your hands and in your hearts and minds. Uh, but if something comes up and it's not working out for you, uh, please feel free to message me and I will help you. And I just want to sincerely thank you for coming. This has been, just been the best thing ever and I'm really hoping to uh, do it next year. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.